Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and this is the How to Read a Cladogram Walkthrough. So if you have your cladogram paper, we're going to go through the first couple together. Of course, we have an example here of a cladogram, and this consists of six different animals. One thing that they all have in common is that they each have a backbone. But we can start to separate these into different groups or different clads using the table of derived characters. So notice you'll see some X's in the table. Those represent traits that that particular organism has. So for instance, if we look in the jaws column, all five of those individuals have jaws. Uh, if you look at the lungs, four of them have lungs, three have dry skin, two have hair, one does not have a tail. How do we take this information and put it into a cladogram? Well, let's start with the jaws column. Now, all five of these have jaws. The one that does not, and it's not even listed on here, is the lamprey. So I'm going to put a little line there. That represents the derived character that separates the lamprey from the rest of the animals that are on this cladogram. Then we go to the lungs. So notice that the gorilla, lizard, salamander, and tiger all have lungs. And so that is the separating point from these four compared to the shark. Actually, the shark and the lamprey, neither of them have lungs. Then we go to the dry skin. The gorilla, lizard, and tiger have dry skin. That separates the salamander from that group because the salamanders have to have moist skin. That's how they breathe. Now to separate these last three, uh, we see that the gorilla has hair and the tiger has hair. The lizard does not have any hair, so that separates the tiger and the gorilla from the lizard. And lastly, the gorilla does not have a tail, whereas the tiger does. And so based on this table of derived characters, we can make a cladogram. So what we're going to be practicing in the over the next couple of activities is how can I take a table and make a cladogram? But we're also going to look at a cladogram and make a table. And then you're going to then look at some pictures, make a table and a cladogram from that. So let's practice one of these. So here we see a cladogram and an empty table. And we're going to fill out this table based on the cladogram. So let's start by just looking at the uh, pictures of the animals here and filling out the table that way. Starting with wings. So we're just going to put an X in the box that shows the animals that have wings and it looks like it's just going to be the housefly, the dragonfly, and the butterfly. Then we'll look to having six legs. Who has six legs? So that would be the ant, the aphid, the housefly, the dragonfly, and the butterfly. Next, we will look at who has segmented bodies. Now, some of these bodies are found in two segments, some are found in three, some are found in multiple segments. And in fact, in this case, all of these organisms have a segmented body. Next is a double set of wings. So we can see that the dragonfly has a double set of wings and the butterfly has a double set of wings. The next are called circe. These are abdominal appendages. And if you take a look at the aphid, uh, you'll see on the end of its abdomen, uh, there is a some branching. Those are circe. They're the only things that have that. I'm going to put an X there. Crushing mouth parts. Now this is one's hard to see from these diagrams, but I will tell you that it is only the ant that has that. Next are legs. Now we're not looking at how many legs, just that they have legs in general. And so, uh, although we can't see them on the butterfly, they do have legs. In fact, the only thing that doesn't have legs on here is the earthworm. So we can put an X on each of those. And then and then curly antenna, and as I look at that, only the butterfly has that one. How do we break these apart? Well, let's start with the letter A on our cladogram. So this is happening before, you know, a little bit different than the first one, it ha is happening before all these animals. So this is going to be something that all the animals have in common, which if we take a look on our 
table, that would be the segmented body. So I'm going to label that A. And then B is going to be what do all these animals have in common except for the earthworm. And that would be legs. So legs is going to, we'll label that as B. And then what do all these other animals have in common that the spider and the earthworm don't have in common? And that would be, yeah, the earthworm and the spider don't have six legs. Everything else does. So C is going to be six legs. Now here we have a branch off of one of our clads, which certainly can happen in a cladogram. So these animals all have things in common, but there's one thing that the ant has, uh, and there's one thing that the aphid has that the others don't. And so if we look at that D, what's one thing that the ant has that nobody else has? Yeah, that's the crushing mouth parts. So we're going to label that as D. And E, one thing that the aphid has that nothing, nobody else has, and that is the Circe. So that is E. Now what do these last three all have in common? The housefly, the dragonfly, and the butterfly. And yeah, that's that they all have wings. So wings would be F. What do the dragonfly and the butterfly have in common that the others don't? And that is, looking on our table, a double set of wings. So that is G. And then what separates the dragonfly from the butterfly? That would be the curly antenna, which would be labeled H. In the next part of your paper, you are going to be making a table based on the pictures of the animals that you see. And then from that table, you are going to create a cladogram. So as you're going through this, if you run into any problems, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you.